from Seattle, Washington, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube on the ground at OpenStack Day Seattle 2015. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Seattle. This is a special Cube presentation, Cube on the ground, o OTG, we call it, on the ground. We go out to the <laughs> event and talk to all the thought leaders. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. Our next is Aaron Delp with Solidify, and also the famous Cloudcast podcast. Uh, great to see you again. I know. Good to see you, John. Um, Cloudcast uh, is a hot pr podcast. All the thought leaders are listening. Customers are listening. You guys well, are you. really the signal out there on cloud, um, and also Solidify are growing. You know, it's all flash. Storage, you guys are kicking some butt there. Mm -hmm. Always keeping tabs on you guys. New approach to cloud. What's going on with cloud? Give us the update of OpenStack. What's the bottom line? I mean, is it failing? Is it winning? Is it growing? Is it stalled? What do we expect to see? Yeah, no, so it's at an interesting point because it absolutely is growing, but it still has some operational challenges. That's the number one thing we're seeing right now is actually just talking to some folks in the hall. A common theme is you're still trying to figure out how to upgrade it easily. Still figuring out how to operate it easily, right? And the uh, gentleman from Canonical made, the, made the, the reference to, you know, ketchup, right? Everyone has the ingredients to make ketchup in your kitchen, but no one makes their ketchup, right? And I thought that was fantastic because it's, you know, everyone's kind of looking for that easy button and it's starting to show up. You know, you've got the Blue Box folks, you've got the Platform 9 folks, you've got some interesting startups actually coming into the OpenStack space, which shows us there is some definitely some innovation and some new things going on, but it's because of the challenges we faced until now. The question is, is the ketchup good? I mean, is that last ingredient going to make it so that it's not too watery? I mean, is Kubernetes, is containers? Yeah. So truly, is it good ketchup? And yeah. what's the next? What's the key ingredient? Well, yeah, and that's, that's a fantastic point because we are at this inflection point where OpenStack was a necessary next step, without a doubt. We had to get that first step into cloud-native applications. Had to do it. But where we're going with Mesos and Kubernetes and with MesosCon going on down the street. Is that the true next evolution? Is it like the OpenStack Murano project where you're kind of getting containers built into OpenStack? We'll have to wait and see. Um, because that, that, the, anytime you talk Kubernetes, anytime you talk Mesos, that's it is so cutting edge. So at this point in time, still Silicon Valley only. So OpenStack, obviously, meme of OpenStack being dead is kind of false. We saw some things happen last year Absolutely. with OpenStack SV. Some people aren't going to be there this year that were there last year. Yes. They either went out of business or mm -hmm. the executives have left. But yet, a lot of dynamics going on. Paul Moritz is stepping down as CEO of Cloud of uh, Pivotal. Mm -hmm. Cloud Foundry claims $100 million in revenue. <laughs> uh, love to see those books. But um, right. but the qu and obviously Amazon is, is, mm -hmm. is doing their thing. and. But it's really a dynamic market right now, so so it's there. Yes. The question is, who's doing what in revenue? What's the numbers? Is it all professional services? I mean, Cloud Foundry, 100 million, that's a, that's a huge number. I just, is that all professional services? Do they actually selling product? Yeah, and, and that's a fantastic point, because the, and on the Cloudcast, we saw this consolidation coming for a long time. We, we really started covering OpenStack about four years ago, and we were just waiting for, at some point, you know, when we first started, there was, 15 plus uh, startups in the OpenStack space. And there just wasn't enough customers there. There wasn't enough revenue there. And you just saw this natural consolidation come to a head last year. And yeah, some are no longer here. A lot of them were sucked up into the various vendors. And what you're seeing now is especially at the OpenStack summits and like these events here, you have a much more mature ecosystem. It's almost like the new legacy of, you know, all of these vendors are there, they're all mature, they're trying to play in this space, they're trying to make money off of it, and time will tell. And it's then- a, It's an evolution. I mean, but exactly. you brought up the point, you brought up the easy button. What is that easy button now? Is it just deployment in a box? Is it like, just give me prefabricated OpenStack? Yeah. Is it tooling? Is it management? We're hearing a lot of different things. Yeah, and I think time will tell, but I, I do think the preference we're seeing in our customers is definitely moving towards that easy button as a service, if you will of some of those companies where the operations of OpenStack, because it hasn't gotten easier at the same level of the adoption, people are looking to what is that next step. If the operations were to get easier, I don't think we'd see that market be as popular as it is right now. Is, it, is the market still in early adopter? That's the thing that's on my mind. Has it crossed over yet? 
I, I think it has. I, I think we're, at least in OpenStack context, we're, we're beyond early adopter phase. Uh, there is a lot of folks out there using it, but what's interesting is, is to kind of go back around to the previous question a little bit, the distros haven't taken off like I think they probably should have. Uh, most of the large customers I've seen are still roll your own. And it is still that staff of engineers really keeping it up and running. And again, because the, what was the value added to the di distributions? We're starting to see the Red Hat distribution get a, you know, to that point where we're, we're, we're getting good adoption of that. We're seeing the Marantis one with the, all the fuel work they're doing. We're getting good adoption with that. So the question on adoption is, it's either not, uh, people aren't aware of it or the product sucks. So is it a mix of both? Is it an awareness issue or is it a product issue? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I think it's a, it, it's a question of differentiation. I, I don't know that the, it's differentiated enough at this point in time. It's, it's, you know, if you go build your own versus you farm it out, if you will, completely, Big differences, right? But it's almost like sh shades of gray. It could be fear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it could exactly. be a third dimension. It, it, you know. it could absolutely be fear. Well, that's the thing. You've been the interesting notion of operators. We're hearing a lot about operators. So the question is, if I'm an engineering team, I might want to have my tire kickers go through the motions, yep. and that's not necessarily a proof of concept. That's just core competency building. So yep. that that fear could be an issue of core competence. So maybe they're aware of it. Maybe the product's decent. Maybe it's just that their team's not core enough to do that. Yeah, the, when it comes to the, the folks in-house, um, yeah, again, going back to the easy button, what what we really need in the OpenStack community is that POC in a box, and that's probably there today, don't get me wrong, but, but everyone sees that POC in a box, but then they're afraid of, does that mean, can I scale it out to 100 nodes, 1,000 nodes, and, and will it be as easy? And it's almost gotten a reputation now of no, and, and so how do we get it to grow to 100 nodes, 1,000 nodes, whatever you want, and do the business value out of I don't need a big staff of people. And how do I get you know, the underlying infrastructure to be simpler? at the end of the day. It's like a little cloud cast we got going on here. I mean, I think in my opinion, <laughs> my opinion, I think it's just a matter of the customers having the ability to execute yes. and, and, and have the total cost of ownership equation nailed out. I think there's still this gray area of, there's no straight and narrow on, yep. on the execution. What's my cost? Am I gonna be locked into that vendor? Yep. What's gonna be the lock-in? Oh my God, the, yes. the shark fin, the iceberg, whatever metaphor right. you wanna use. Yes, no, is that Is there visibility on the ownership side of it? Because downstream, what's the in impact? Well, it, what's interesting there too is the, the biggest thing I, I'm seeing is, for, again, from an operation standpoint, how do we make this as simple as possible? Because what happens is, you have this weird convoluted thing if you have the whole legacy apps versus cloud native apps. And you, you take that and put it aside for a second, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. If we take that and put it aside, well, what, what do they really want? It doesn't matter what kind of app it is. Well, the developers want API-driven infrastructure. You can call it cloud, but at the end of the day, it's, it's an infrastructure that's driven by APIs. And then as simple as possible, you know, being able to really guarantee the uptime, guarantee the performance, and that's where OpenStack at times, it, it gets a bad rap. I don't, I, and I'm not even necessarily agreeing with that. It might not even be worthy of a bad rap in that Agreed, case. absolutely, because there are known customers out there that are doing it and doing it very well. Yeah. But again, it's how do you get beyond that reputation? Well, Stu Miniman at Wikibon and Brian Gracely and now Wikibon and, and I were having a conversation about this and I think Dave Vellante even chimed in and we were d debating, it was, off across the board, different opinions. Yes. What the hell does cloud native app mean? You know, is it is Amazon a cloud native? Of course, they're cloud sure. native. Uh, Facebook a cloud native yeah. app? Okay, but what does that mean for an enterprise? Does that mean that the app was built for just APIs? So to me, it just doesn't seem there's been a lot of there's not a lot of cloud native apps out there right now. Or, is, or no. what is a cloud? Yeah, native and, app? and and it's a fantastic question. And my uh, opinion have always been, you know, there's there was this kind of trend in the industry. How do I take these legacy apps and make them cloud native? Well, the simple answer is you don't. Uh, the way I look at it is it's really more of like a starve the old, build the new mentality. You, you want to maintain those legacy systems, but at the same time, as those kind of age off the books, if you will, you're going to have to build a new infrastructure. So if you're going to build new infrastructure, you might as well build it the new way. But that has to happen over time. That is not something that happens. You know, Most businesses out there today, they don't do technology for the sake of technology. There has to be a business reason and a business driver. If that legacy app is still out there making them money, they're going to keep using it. Well, and, and true to your point, if you cloud native is the future, the soil has to 
re, you know, yes. yield some fruit on that tree, if you will. So exactly. that's going to take some time. Exactly. So, so uh, you know, I very much see this as, as a longer tail than most people would like, without a doubt. It, it is just a matter of, of how are we going to get there long term. Um, and yeah, there's lots of terminology in the cloud native and what does that mean big picture? And architecturally, that's all solved. It's getting the businesses to rewrite the apps and really get them. Aaron, we're in Seattle right now on the ground. So quickly describe to the folks out there, what's mm -hmm. the vibe here? What's it like in Seattle? It's been, yeah, so it's been interesting. I've been in here since Tuesday now, and I've done LinuxCon, CloudStack Day, OpenStack Day, and MesosCon. Uh, all in the, the in three days now. So it's what did you learn? <laughs> yeah, it's been a world in thirty yeah. seconds. I know. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, the the biggest thing is there is still a lot of confusion. In yes, people are starting to get legacy versus cloud native. But when it comes to which technologies do I use? Why would I use them? What are the actual business drivers to actually go adopt some of these new technologies? Massive amounts of confusion around that. And that's probably the biggest reason for you know, trying to get knowledge out in the industry right now, without a doubt. OK, we are OTG on the ground. This is the Cube in Seattle. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching and all the coverage here at OpenStack Innovation Day. Thanks for watching.